Welcome back to A Journey Through the Bible, where we continue our exciting chapter-by-chapter -chapter exploration of God's Word, from Genesis all the way to Revelation. In our previous video, we dove deep into Leviticus chapters 1 through 7, where we explored the powerful symbolism behind the sacrifices and feasts that shaped Israel's worship. If you haven't seen that video yet, we encourage you to go check it out. You don't want to miss the rich insights into the offerings that reveal so much about our relationship with God. But today, we step into a sacred and transformative section of Scripture as we uncover the path to purity and holiness laid out in Leviticus chapters 8 through 15. In these incredible chapters, we witness the consecration of Aaron and his sons as priests, setting them apart for God's service. Then, the journey continues as God provides instructions on living in purity, health, and holiness, important guidelines that extend from the priest to every member of the community. From the sacred rituals of purification to the detailed guidelines on cleanliness and health, Leviticus 8 to 15 shows us God's desire for His people to reflect His holiness in every part of their lives. These chapters reveal a God who longs to dwell among His people, calling them and us, to walk the path of purity. So, if you're ready to dive deeper into the mysteries of holiness and purity, stay with us as we explore these powerful passages. And don't forget to subscribe, share this video with your friends, and continue this incredible journey with us. Let's discover what it truly means to live a life set apart for God. Leviticus chapter 10. Aaron's sons Nadab and Abihu took their censers put fire in them, and added incense. And they offered unauthorized fire before the Lord, contrary to his command. So fire came out from the presence of the Lord, and consumed them, and they died before the Lord. Moses then said to Aaron, This is what the Lord spoke of when he said, Among those who approach me, I will be proved holy, in the sight of all the people. I will be honored. Aaron remained silent. Moses summoned Mishael and Elzaphan, sons of Aaron's uncle Uzziel, and said to them, Come here, carry your cousins outside the camp, away from the front of the sanctuary. So they came and carried them, still in their tunics, outside the camp, as Moses ordered. Then Moses said to Aaron and his sons Eleazar and Ithamar, Do not let your hair become unkempt, and do not tear your clothes, or you will die and the Lord will be angry with the whole community. But your relatives, all the Israelites, may mourn for those the Lord has destroyed by fire. Do not leave the entrance to the tent of meeting, or you will die, because the Lord's anointing oil is on you. So they did as Moses said. Then the Lord said to Aaron, You and your sons are not to drink wine or other fermented drink whenever you go into the tent of meeting, or you will die. This is a lasting ordinance for the generations to come, so that you can distinguish between the holy and the common, between the unclean and the clean, and so you can teach the Israelites all the decrees the Lord has given them through Moses. Moses said to Aaron and his remaining sons, Eleazar and Ithamar, Take the grain offering left over from the food offerings prepared without yeast and present it to the Lord, and eat it beside the altar, for it is most holy. Eat it in the sanctuary area, because it is your share and your son's share of the food offerings presented to the Lord. For so I have been commanded. But you and your sons and your daughters may eat the breast that was waved and the thigh that was presented. Eat them in a ceremonially clean place. They have been given to you and your children as your share of the Israelites' fellowship offerings. The thigh that was presented and the breast that was waved must be brought with the fat portions of the food offerings to be waved before the Lord as a wave offering. This will be the perpetual share for you and your children, as the Lord has commanded. When Moses inquired about the goat of the sin offering and found that it had been burned up, he was angry with Eleazar and Ithamar, Aaron's remaining sons, and asked, Why didn't you eat the sin offering in the sanctuary area? It is most holy. It was given to you to take away the guilt of the community by making atonement for them before the Lord. Since its blood was not taken into the holy place, you should have eaten the goat in the sanctuary area, as I commanded. Aaron replied to Moses, Today they sacrificed their sin offering and their burnt offering before the Lord, but such things as this have happened to me. 
Would the Lord have been pleased if I had eaten the sin offering today? When Moses heard this, he was satisfied. Leviticus chapter 11 The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Say to the Israelites, Of all the animals that live on land, these are the ones you may eat. You may eat any animal that has a divided hoof and that chews the cud. There are some that only chew the cud or only have a divided hoof, but you must not eat them. The camel, though it chews the cud, does not have a divided hoof. It is ceremonially unclean for you. The hyrax, though it chews the cud, does not have a divided hoof. It is unclean for you. The rabbit, though it chews the cud, does not have a divided hoof. It is unclean for you. And the pig, though it has a divided hoof, does not chew the cud. It is unclean for you. You must not eat their meat or touch their carcasses. They are unclean for you. Of all the creatures living in the water of the seas and the streams, you may eat any that have fins and scales. But all creatures in the seas or streams that do not have fins and scales, whether among all the swarming things or among all the other living creatures in the water, you are to regard as unclean. And since you are to regard them as unclean, you must not eat their meat. You must regard their carcasses as unclean. Anything living in the water that does not have fins and scales is to be regarded as unclean by you. These are the birds you are to regard as unclean and not eat because they are unclean. The eagle, the vulture, the black vulture, the red kite, any kind of black kite, any kind of raven, the horned owl, the screech owl, the gull, any kind of hawk, the little owl, the cormorant, the great owl, the white owl, the desert owl, the osprey, the stork, any kind of heron, the hoopoe, and the bat. All flying insects that walk on all fours are to be regarded as unclean by you. There are, however, some flying insects that walk on all fours that you may eat, those that have jointed legs for hopping on the ground. Of these you may eat any kind of locust, katydid, cricket, or grasshopper. But all other flying insects that have four legs you are to regard as unclean. You will make yourselves unclean by these. Whoever touches their carcasses will be unclean till evening. Whoever picks up one of their carcasses must wash their clothes, and they will be unclean till evening. Every animal that does not have a divided hoof or that does not chew the cud is unclean for you. Whoever touches the carcass of any of them will be unclean. Of all the animals that walk on all fours, those that walk on their paws are unclean for you. Whoever touches their carcasses will be unclean till evening. Anyone who picks up their carcasses must wash their clothes and they will be unclean till evening. These animals are unclean for you. Of the animals that move along the ground, these are unclean for you. The weasel, the rat, any kind of great lizard, the gecko, the monitor lizard, the wall lizard, the skink, and the chameleon. Of all those that move along the ground, these are unclean for you. Whoever touches them when they are dead will be unclean till evening. When one of them dies and falls on something, that article, Whatever its use will be unclean, whether it is made of wood, cloth, hide, or sackcloth. Put it in water. It will be unclean till evening, and then it will be clean. If one of them falls into a clay pot, everything in it will be unclean, and you must break the pot. Any food you are allowed to eat that has come into contact with water from any such pot is unclean, and any liquid that is drunk from such a pot is unclean. Anything that one of their carcasses falls on becomes unclean. An oven or cooking pot must be broken up. They are unclean, and you are to regard them as unclean. A spring, however, or a cistern for collecting water remains clean, but anyone who touches one of these carcasses is unclean. If a carcass falls on any seeds that are to be planted, they remain clean. But if water has been put on the seed and a carcass falls on it, it is unclean for you. If an animal that you are allowed to eat dies, anyone who touches its carcass will be unclean till evening. Anyone who eats some of its carcass must wash their clothes, and they will be unclean till evening. Anyone who picks up the carcass must wash their clothes, and they will be unclean till evening. Every creature that moves along the ground is to be regarded as unclean. It is not to be eaten. You are not to eat any creature that moves along the ground whether it moves on its belly or walks on all fours or on many feet. It is unclean. Do not defile yourselves by any of these creatures. Do not make yourselves unclean by means of them or be made unclean by them. I am the Lord your God. Consecrate yourselves and be holy, because I am holy.
Do not make yourselves unclean by any creature that moves along the ground. I am the Lord, who brought you up out of Egypt to be your God. Therefore be holy, because I am holy. These are the regulations concerning animals, birds, every living thing that moves about in the water, and every creature that moves along the ground. You must distinguish between the unclean and the clean, between living creatures that may be eaten and those that may not be eaten. Leviticus chapter 12. The Lord said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, A woman who becomes pregnant and gives birth to a son will be ceremonially unclean for seven days, just as she is unclean during her monthly period. On the eighth day the boy is to be circumcised. Then the woman must wait 33 days to be purified from her bleeding. She must not touch anything sacred or go to the sanctuary until the days of her purification are over. If she gives birth to a daughter, for two weeks the woman will be unclean, as during her period. Then she must wait 66 days to be purified from her bleeding. When the days of her purification for a son or daughter are over, she is to bring to the priest at the entrance to the tent of meeting a year-old lamb for a burnt offering and a young pigeon or a dove for a sin offering. He shall offer them before the Lord to make atonement for her, and then she will be ceremonially clean from her flow of blood. These are the regulations for the woman who gives birth to a boy or a girl. But if she cannot afford a lamb, she is to bring two doves or two young pigeons, one for a burnt offering and the other for a sin offering. In this way the priest will make atonement for her, and she will be clean. Leviticus chapter 13 The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, When anyone has a swelling or a rash or a shiny spot on their skin that may be a defiling skin disease, they must be brought to Aaron the priest or to one of his sons who is a priest. The priest is to examine the sore on the skin, and if the hair in the sore has turned white and the sore appears to be more than skin deep, it is a defiling skin disease. When the priest examines that person, he shall pronounce them ceremonially unclean. If the shiny spot on the skin is white, but does not appear to be more than skin deep, and the hair in it has not turned white, the priest is to isolate the affected person for seven days. On the seventh day, the priest is to examine them. And if he sees that the sore is unchanged and has not spread in the skin, he is to isolate them for another seven days. On the seventh day, the priest is to examine them again. And if the sore is faded and has not spread in the skin, the priest shall pronounce them clean. It is only a rash. They must wash their clothes, and they will be clean. But if the rash does spread in their skin after they have shown themselves to the priest to be pronounced clean, they must appear before the priest again. The priest is to examine that person, and if the rash is spread in the skin, he shall pronounce them unclean. It is a defiling skin disease. When anyone has a defiling skin disease, they must be brought to the priest. The priest is to examine them, and if there is a white swelling in the skin that has turned the hair white, and if there is raw flesh in the swelling, it is a chronic skin disease, and the priest shall pronounce them unclean. He is not to isolate them, because they are already unclean, if the disease breaks out all over their skin, and, so far as the priest can see, it covers all the skin of the affected person from head to foot, the priest is to examine them. And if the disease has covered their whole body, he shall pronounce them clean. Since it has all turned white, they are clean. But whenever raw flesh appears on them, they will be unclean. When the priest sees the raw flesh, he shall pronounce them unclean. The raw flesh is unclean. They have a defiling disease. If the raw flesh changes and turns white, they must go to the priest. The priest is to examine them. And if the sores have turned white, the priest shall pronounce the affected person clean. Then they will be clean. When someone has a boil on their skin and it heals, and in the place where the boil was, a white swelling or reddish white spot appears, they must present themselves to the priest. The priest is to examine it. And if it appears to be more than skin deep and the hair in it has turned white, the priest shall pronounce the person unclean. It is a defiling skin disease that has broken out where the boil was. But if, when the priest examines it, there is no white hair in it, and it is not more than skin deep and is faded, then the priest is to isolate them for seven days. If it is spreading in the skin, the priest shall pronounce them unclean. It is a defiling disease. But if the spot is unchanged and is not spread, it is only a scar from the boil and the priest shall pronounce them clean. When someone has a burn on their skin, and a reddish-white or white spot appears in the raw flesh of the burn, 
the priest is to examine the spot, and if the hair in it is turned white, and it appears to be more than skin deep, it is a defiling disease that has broken out in the burn. The priest shall pronounce them unclean. It is a defiling skin disease. But if the priest examines it, and there is no white hair in the spot, and if it is not more than skin deep and has faded, then the priest is to isolate them for seven days. On the seventh day, the priest is to examine that person. And if it is spreading in the skin, the priest shall pronounce them unclean. It is a defiling skin disease. If, however, the spot is unchanged and is not spread in the skin, but is faded, it is a swelling from the burn, and the priest shall pronounce them clean. It is only a scar from the burn. If a man or woman has a sore on their head or chin, the priest is to examine the sore, and if it appears to be more than skin deep and the hair in it is yellow and thin, the priest shall pronounce them unclean. It is a defiling skin disease on the head or chin. But if, when the priest examines the sore, it does not seem to be more than skin deep and there is no black hair in it, then the priest is to isolate the affected person for seven days. On the seventh day, the priest is to examine the sore. And if it is not spread and there is no yellow hair in it, and it does not appear to be more than skin deep, then the man or woman must shave themselves, except for the affected area, and the priest is to keep them isolated another seven days. On the seventh day, the priest is to examine the sore. And if it is not spread in the skin and appears to be no more than skin deep, the priest shall pronounce them clean. They must wash their clothes, and they will be clean. But if the sore does spread in the skin after they are pronounced clean, the priest is to examine them. And if he finds that the sore is spread in the skin, he does not need to look for yellow hair. They are unclean. If, however, the sore is unchanged so far as the priest can see, and if black hair is grown in it, the affected person is healed. They are clean, and the priest shall pronounce them clean. When a man or woman has white spots on the skin, the priest is to examine them. And if the spots are dull white, it is a harmless rash that is broken out on the skin. They are clean. A man who has lost his hair and is bald is clean. If he has lost his hair from the front of his scalp and has a bald forehead, he is clean. But if he has a reddish-white sore on his bald head or forehead, it is a defiling disease breaking out on his head or forehead. The priest is to examine him. And if the swollen sore on his head or forehead is reddish-white like a defiling skin disease, the man is diseased and is unclean. The priest shall pronounce him unclean because of the sore on his head. Anyone with such a defiling disease must wear torn clothes, let their hair be unkempt, cover the lower part of their face, and cry out, Unclean! Unclean! As long as they have the disease, they remain unclean. They must live alone. They must live outside the camp. As for any fabric that is spoiled with a defiling mold, any woolen or linen clothing, any woven or knitted material of linen or wool, any leather or anything made of leather if the affected area in the fabric, the leather, the woven or knitted material, or any leather article, is greenish or reddish. It is a defiling mold and must be shown to the priest. The priest is to examine the affected area and isolate the article for seven days. On the seventh day, he is to examine it. And if the mold has spread in the fabric, the woven or knitted material, or the leather, whatever its use, it is a persistent defiling mold. The article is unclean. He must burn the fabric, the woven or knitted material of wool or linen, or any leather article that has been spoiled. Because the defiling mold is persistent, the article must be burned. But if, when the priest examines it, the mold is not spread in the fabric, the woven or knitted material, or the leather article, he shall order that the spoiled article be washed. Then he is to isolate it for another seven days. After the article has been washed, the priest is to examine it again. And if the mold has not changed its appearance, even though it is not spread, it is unclean. Burn it, no matter which side of the fabric has been spoiled. If when the priest examines it, the mold is faded after the article has been washed, he is to tear the spoiled part out of the fabric, the leather, or the woven or knitted material. But if it reappears in the fabric, in the woven or knitted material, or in the leather article, it is a spreading mold. Whatever has the mold must be burned. Any fabric, woven, or knitted material, or any leather article that has been washed and is rid of the mold, must be washed again. Then it will be clean. These are the regulations concerning defiling molds in woolen or linen clothing, woven or knitted material, or any leather article, 
for pronouncing them clean or unclean. Leviticus chapter 14. The Lord said to Moses, These are the regulations for any diseased person at the time of their ceremonial cleansing, when they are brought to the priest. The priest is to go outside the camp and examine them. If they have been healed of their defiling skin disease, the priest shall order that two live clean birds and some cedar wood, scarlet yarn, and hyssop be brought for the person to be cleansed. Then the priest shall order that one of the birds be killed over fresh water in a clay pot. He is then to take the live bird and dip it, together with the cedar wood, the scarlet yarn, and the hyssop, into the blood of the bird that was killed over the fresh water. Seven times he shall sprinkle the one to be cleansed of the defiling disease, and then pronounce them clean. After that, he is to release the live bird in the open fields. The person to be cleansed must wash their clothes, shave off all their hair, and bathe with water. Then they will be ceremonially clean. After this, they may come into the camp, but they must stay outside their tent for seven days. On the seventh day, they must shave off all their hair. They must shave their head, their beard, their eyebrows, and the rest of their hair. They must wash their clothes and bathe themselves with water, and they will be clean. On the eighth day, they must bring two male lambs and one ewe lamb a year old, each without defect, along with three-tenths of an ephah of the finest flour mixed with olive oil for a grain offering, and one log of oil. The priest who pronounces them clean shall present both the one to be cleansed and their offerings before the Lord at the entrance to the tent of meeting. Then the priest is to take one of the male lambs and offer it as a guilt offering, along with the log of oil. He shall wave them before the Lord as a wave offering. He is to slaughter the lamb in the sanctuary area where the sin offering and the burnt offering are slaughtered. Like the sin offering, the guilt offering belongs to the priest. It is most holy. The priest is to take some of the blood of the guilt offering and put it on the lobe of the right ear of the one to be cleansed, on the thumb of their right hand, and on the big toe of their right foot. The priest shall then take some of the log of oil, pour it in the palm of his own left hand, dip his right forefinger into the oil in his palm, and with his fingers sprinkle some of it before the Lord seven times. The priest is to put some of the oil remaining in his palm on the lobe of the right ear of the one to be cleansed, on the thumb of their right hand, and on the big toe of their right foot, on top of the blood of the guilt offering. The rest of the oil in his palm the priest shall put on the head of the one to be cleansed, and make atonement for them before the Lord. Then the priest is to sacrifice the sin offering, and make atonement for the one to be cleansed from their uncleanness. After that, the priest shall slaughter the burnt offering and offer it on the altar, together with the grain offering, and make atonement for them, and they will be clean. If, however, they are poor and cannot afford these, they must take one male lamb as a guilt offering to be waved to make atonement for them, together with a tenth of an ephah of the finest flour mixed with olive oil for a grain offering, a log of oil, and two doves or two young pigeons, such as they can afford, one for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering. On the eighth day, they must bring them for their cleansing to the priest at the entrance to the tent of meeting before the Lord. The priest is to take the lamb for the guilt offering, together with the log of oil, and wave them before the Lord as a wave offering. He shall slaughter the lamb for the guilt offering, and take some of its blood, and put it on the lobe of the right ear of the one to be cleansed, on the thumb of their right hand, and on the big toe of their right foot. The priest is to pour some of the oil into the palm of his own left hand, and with his right forefinger sprinkle some of the oil from his palm seven times before the Lord. Some of the oil in his palm he is to put on the same places he put the blood of the guilt offering, on the lobe of the right ear of the one to be cleansed, on the thumb of their right hand, and on the big toe of their right foot. The rest of the oil in his palm the priest shall put on the head of the one to be cleansed, to make atonement for them before the Lord. Then he shall sacrifice the doves or the young pigeons, such as the person can afford, one as a sin offering and the other as a burnt offering, together with the grain offering. In this way the priest will make atonement before the Lord on behalf of the one to be cleansed. These are the regulations for anyone who has a defiling skin disease and who cannot afford the regular offerings for their cleansing. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, When you enter the land of Canaan, which I am giving you as your possession, and I put a spreading mold in a house in that land, the owner of the house must go and tell the priest, I have seen something that looks like a defiling mold in my house. 
The priest is to order the house to be empty before he goes in to examine the mold, so that nothing in the house will be pronounced unclean. After this, the priest is to go in and inspect the house. He is to examine the mold on the walls, and if it has greenish or reddish depressions that appear to be deeper than the surface of the wall, the priest shall go out the doorway of the house and close it up for seven days. On the seventh day, the priest shall return to inspect the house. If the mold has spread on the walls, he is to order that the contaminated stones be torn out and thrown into an unclean place outside the town. He must have all the inside walls of the house scraped and the material that is scraped off dumped into an unclean place outside the town. Then they are to take other stones to replace these and take new clay and plaster the house. If the defiling mold reappears in the house after the stones have been torn out and the house scraped and plastered, the priest is to go and examine it. And if the mold is spread in the house, it is a persistent defiling mold. The house is unclean. It must be torn down, its stones, timbers, and all the plaster, and taken out of the town to an unclean place. Anyone who goes into the house while it is closed up will be unclean till evening. Anyone who sleeps or eats in the house must wash their clothes. But if the priest comes to examine it and the mold has not spread after the house has been plastered, he shall pronounce the house clean because the defiling mold is gone. To purify the house, he is to take two birds and some cedar wood, scarlet yarn, and hyssop. He shall kill one of the birds over fresh water in a clay pot. Then he is to take the cedar wood, the hyssop, the scarlet yarn, and the live bird, dip them into the blood of the dead bird and the fresh water, and sprinkle the house seven times. He shall purify the house with the bird's blood, the fresh water, the live bird, the cedar wood, the hyssop, and the scarlet yarn. Then he is to release the live bird in the open fields outside the town. In this way he will make atonement for the house, and it will be clean. These are the regulations for any defiling skin disease, for a sore for defiling molds in fabric or in a house, and for a swelling, a rash, or a shiny spot, to determine when something is clean or unclean. These are the regulations for defiling skin diseases and defiling molds. Leviticus chapter 15 The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, When any man has an unusual bodily discharge, such a discharge is unclean. Whether it continues flowing from his body or is blocked, it will make him unclean. This is how his discharge will bring about uncleanness. Any bed the man with a discharge lies on will be unclean, and anything he sits on will be unclean. Anyone who touches his bed must wash their clothes and bathe with water, and they will be unclean till evening. Whoever sits on anything that the man with a discharge sat on must wash their clothes and bathe with water and they will be unclean till evening. Whoever touches the man who has a discharge must wash their clothes and bathe with water, and they will be unclean till evening. If the man with a discharge spits on anyone who is clean, they must wash their clothes and bathe with water, and they will be unclean till evening. Everything the man sits on when riding will be unclean, and whoever touches any of the things that were under him will be unclean till evening. Whoever picks up those things must wash their clothes and bathe with water, and they will be unclean till evening. Anyone the man with a discharge touches without rinsing his hands with water must wash their clothes and bathe with water, and they will be unclean till evening. A clay pot that the man touches must be broken, and any wooden article is to be rinsed with water. When a man is cleansed from his discharge, he is to count off seven days for his ceremonial cleansing. He must wash his clothes and bathe himself with fresh water, and he will be clean. On the eighth day, he must take two doves or two young pigeons and come before the Lord to the entrance to the tent of meeting and give them to the priest. The priest is to sacrifice them, the one for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering. In this way, he will make atonement before the Lord for the man because of his discharge. When a man has an omission of semen, he must bathe his whole body with water and he will be unclean till evening. Any clothing or leather that has semen on it must be washed with water, and it will be unclean till evening. When a man has sexual relations with a woman, and there is an emission of semen, both of them must bathe with water, and they will be unclean till evening. When a woman has her regular flow of blood, the impurity of her monthly period will last seven days, and anyone who touches her will be unclean till evening. Anything she lies on during her period will be unclean, 
and anything she sits on will be unclean. Anyone who touches her bed will be unclean. They must wash their clothes and bathe with water, and they will be unclean till evening. Anyone who touches anything she sits on will be unclean. They must wash their clothes and bathe with water, and they will be unclean till evening. Whether it is the bed or anything she was sitting on, when anyone touches it, they will be unclean till evening. If a man has sexual relations with her and her monthly flow touches him, he will be unclean for seven days. Any bed he lies on will be unclean. When a woman has a discharge of blood for many days at a time, other than her monthly period, or has a discharge that continues beyond her period, she will be unclean as long as she has the discharge, just as in the days of her period. Any bed she lies on while her discharge continues will be unclean, as is her bed during her monthly period, and anything she sits on will be unclean, as during her period. Anyone who touches them will be unclean. They must wash their clothes and bathe with water, and they will be unclean till evening. When she is cleansed from her discharge, she must count off seven days, and after that she will be ceremonially clean. On the eighth day, she must take two doves, or two young pigeons, and bring them to the priest at the entrance to the tent of meeting. The priest is to sacrifice one for a sin offering, and the other for a burnt offering. In this way, he will make atonement for her, before the Lord for the uncleanness of her discharge. You must keep the Israelites separate from things that make them unclean, so they will not die in their uncleanness for defiling my dwelling place, which is among them. These are the regulations for a man with a discharge, for anyone made unclean by an omission of semen, for a woman in her monthly period, for a man or a woman with a discharge, and for a man who has sexual relations with a woman who is ceremonially unclean. Let us bow down and pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you with humble hearts, grateful for the opportunity to journey through your word together. As we reflect on Leviticus chapters 8 to 15, we are reminded of your holiness and the call to live lives that are pure and set apart for you. Just as you consecrated Aaron and his sons for your service, we ask that you consecrate our hearts and lives today. Lord, help us to understand the importance of purity, not only in our actions but in our thoughts and hearts. Guide us in our walk of faith, showing us how to live lives that honor you in everything we do. Give us the strength to let go of anything that holds us back from fully embracing the path of holiness you have called us to. We pray that each viewer who hears this message would experience a renewed desire to draw closer to you. Help us all to reflect your love, purity, and grace in every area of our lives. Fill us with your Spirit, so we may live lives that bring glory to your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us on this incredible journey through Leviticus chapters 8 to 15. As we've seen, God calls us to live lives of purity and holiness, set apart for His purpose. Let these chapters inspire you to walk closer with God, reflecting His holiness in your daily life. If this video blessed you, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Stay tuned as we continue exploring the powerful truths of God's Word in the next episode of A Journey Through the Bible. May God bless you and guide you on your path of faith. Until next time, walk in His grace.